Today is Wednesday, the 19th of January, 2022, the second Wednesday in Ordinary Time. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading from the Old Testament describes the fight to the death between David and Goliath. The Gospel tells of an ethical debate between the Pharisees and Jesus about what behaviour is allowed on the Sabbath day. Jesus was appalled by their insistence that not even a work of healing was permitted on the Lord's solemn day of rest. So both readings today invite us to think about the rights and wrongs of disputed issues in our lives and in our world. The stronger a country or nation is, the more do its citizens need a mature view on the purpose of war and how to limit its destructive power. David is serene about the outcome of going into single combat with the Philistine giant, Goliath. David says, The Lord will keep me safe from his hands. On a broader scale, the question of whether or what can legitimize any kind of warfare is hotly debated. And in the Old Testament, it offers no final answer since the Old Testament expresses contrary viewpoints about it. However, the Gospel is very clear about the issue. The Gospel says that we should live our lives responsibly, with justice and compassion. Matthew 26 verse 52 reminds us that those who take the sword shall perish by the sword. In Matthew 5 verse 39, Jesus forbids his disciples from being violent, even in self-defense. These ideals make it impossible to justify military adventures in order to expand a nation's territory or to impose its ideology. This can mean speaking out against evil and injustice and working for justice, even at personal cost to ourselves. Our Christian calling is not to be served, but to serve and to spend our lives in loving service. Jesus could have sidestepped the dispute about the Sabbath by healing the sick man in private and out of sight. But Jesus chose to confront the issue publicly and cured the man in full view of all. In the ensuing debate, Jesus leaves them in no doubt about the deeper purpose of the Sabbath. It is, above all, a day for life-giving activities. Jesus stresses the contrast between what is right, whatever enhances life, and what is wrong, whatever diminishes life. God is Lord of life, not death. God is Lord of peace not violence. God is Lord of justice, not oppression. And now we offer up our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that the Church may take the part of David, relying completely on the Lord in every conflict with the powers of evil. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
we pray that Christians may do all they can to exert their influence for the cause of gospel, justice and peace, for concern for the poor, and of course concern for the planet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that we may never remain silent when there is a question of preserving life or destroying it, but always let our voice be heard bravely on the side of the God of the living. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that God may be a refuge and a fortress, a stronghold and a deliverer to those who call upon his name in their sickness, poverty and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that our beloved dead may soon be singing a new song of deliverance and victory in the presence of the Lord in his heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage, the bond of life and love and the font of the family. The love of husband and wife fills the world with a spiritual fruitfulness and service and is the sign of the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his church. The grace of Jesus flowed forth at Cana at the request of the Blessed Mother. May your Son, through the intercession of Mary, pour out upon us a new measure of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as we join with all people of good will to promote and protect the unique beauty of marriage. May your Holy Spirit enlighten our society to treasure the love of husband and wife and guide our leaders to sustain and protect the singular place of mothers and fathers in the lives of their children. Father, we ask that your word may transform our service so as to safeguard the incomparable splendor of marriage. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Digital Media Center. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you with this evangelistic opportunity given to us and inspired by the Holy Spirit. We ask you to consecrate this opportunity to your glory. Without you we can do nothing. Grant us your wisdom and execute it by your power to the glory of God the Father. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 3 and 4 tells us, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. The Lord works out everything for his own ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Resurrection Reflections, an audio outreach of Bryanston Catholic Church of the Resurrection. For more information regarding the church and its activities, please check out our website at www.branstoncatholic.co.za. Alleluia, alleluia.